Welcome to the new plant room. If you've been following this channel for the past six months or so, you'll know that this room has been a work in progress for a long time. I want to say I've been working on this room since the summer. I haven't been working a ton on it, but I've been working hard very intermittently when I've been able to like acquire shelving or exos and in the past few weeks i just did a final push and i think we're at a place where this room is how i want it to be for the foreseeable future i mean it's not it's definitely not in its like final form right now it's you know it's me i'm still i'm still gonna be like moving plants around but the configuration of the shelving and the exos and the grow tent i think i'm gonna keep it as it is for the time being but right now i'm really happy because i have like much more of a backdrop to film with and i'm gonna take you through and show you how things are set up how the lights are installed what lights i'm using a little bit about every plant so i <laughs> i think this video is gonna be like an hour and a half long at least my first plant tour was around that length i could be wrong i don't really remember but it was a lot and I think I actually have fewer plants in this room than I did when I filmed my first plant tour which would have been one of my first videos. I think it was like my second video and the room looks totally different than when I filmed that tour so if you're interested in watching that video I'll link it in the description. It's so cringe. It is one of my earliest videos so I don't really want you to watch it but if you're curious as to what the room looked like before this transformation, this is the video to watch. But yeah, before we start the tour, I will throw out some footage as to what the room looked like before so we just have a little bit of a basis of comparison. But before we start the tour, I wanted to do a quick segment talking about this guy. So this is the Mother Grow Light. I unboxed this in the video. If you want to see the unboxing of that light, I'll link in the description. It's this video. I unbox it near to like the last third of the video. Mother was kind enough to send me these lights to try and I already knew I wanted the light. I was going to purchase with my own money but it was really nice that I didn't have to and I was able to try these out in two sizes. So this one is the 16 inch plant spectrum light and they also sent me the 32 inch plant spectrum light. Before I knew anything about the light, the thing that really drew me was that it was on a stand. It's very like customizable in how you use it because you can either mount it or put it on the stand and you can just kind of place it where you need to. But it being on a stand, th this is the reason why I wanted this light in the first place is because there aren't very many lights that you can point forwards and pointing a light forwards means the plant is going to face forwards towards the light which means you get this like really nice wall of leaves facing you which is exactly what I wanted for this shelf here so you're gonna see in a moment how I have these lights set up but I have both of them set up this way but I also have mounts if I were to want to mount it to the ceiling if I wanted to mount one of them to the ceiling if I were to get more I could get them on the ceiling just so I get get more ambient light within this room so back here you can see that there is a track where you can install uh, wires to hang a light this way you can also mount it with little like hardware mounts directly under a shelf. This plant room that we're in right now is kind of adjacent to our bedroom and with all the lights on it can kind of look like the sun is beaming out of this room so another thing I really loved about the light is that like if you look at it from back here there's no light. I'm going to show it to you with the light on. You can't really see anything. You can only see that it's illuminated from behind. You're not going to have light spilling out into places that you don't want it to be. Even from the side, you can't really see. You can just see that it's illuminated over here. So it's really when you're like head on with the light, do you actually get the light coming from this light? How many times am I gonna say light? So that's another thing I really loved about it. It's just like, it's very focused light. It's a very, as you can see, very, very white light. It's not blue, it's not pink, it is, like wider than the lights that I have currently, which are the Barina lights, which is fine. They kind of complement each other. They're, I don't find that it's um, annoying to have two color temperatures within the room. Because of the way that I'm using it, I'm using it like this, shining it onto this shelf. So the brightness and the temperature of this light means that I 
really see the leaves and the plants like as they are in very very true color they're very well illuminated so i can um it actually prompted me to dust the leaves i mean not all of them are dusted but i did have to dust some leaves which i did i, I don't see the dust normally so it, it kind of like pushed me to you know get those leaves cleaned it definitely has this feeling of like art lighting where like you're lighting a painting. The only thing I have to be concerned about is like when Huxley has his like nighttime zooms, he likes to come up to the upstairs and do his zooms around and I just have to make sure I keep the plant room door closed for his zoomies because I do not want him knocking over these lights. I really wanted to do a little focus on these lights because they have been such an integral part of me putting together this room, this little final bit and I, it wouldn't have been possible to do a shelf like this without a light like this. The beauty of it is that I don't need to keep it this way. I can unplug it and move it however I want. Everything is very, very movable. So that has been so great for me and it's really, really transformed this room. So in the last few years, I've used a few different types of grow lights. There's some that I've liked more than others and most of them I've gotten based off of people's recommendations. People like I admire or my friends who use this light and they have an Amazon link so I use their link and I buy the lights. I've bought so many lights and it hasn't been great on the wallet. I want to say if I could rewind the clock and I could just buy the Barina T5s the yellow one for you know smaller shelving or enclosures where I don't want a ton of light because they're kind of more delicate plants and then these ones that would have been what I would have started out with I would have saved myself so much money we know how important lighting is to a room and the aesthetics and just kind of the general mood that it sets and I used to use um, these Domia lights that were quite like peachy pinky yellow and they were nice in a way but also like they weren't. The LED board didn't last very long so over time it just kind of got more and more red. Like I didn't really see this happening until Charmaine pointed it out. She's like my room is way more pink than it used to be and then I started to notice it. They're cheap-ish. They're pretty cheap. They were I think like $30 for two, two panels but they didn't last and I've, I spent so much money on them when I could have just gotten one of these and it would have still been with me today it would have it would have looked better the whole time as well and I guarantee the plants would have grown better so I know these lights are a little bit of an investment but I'm in the place of my life where I'm trying to be a lot more conscious about what I purchase and giving every purchase a good long thought before actually buying it so I'm not buying needless things based on a whim um, which is how I acquired so many plants in the first place I'm just trying to be more conscious about when I buy something that is for function that I'm only buying it once for a very long time. I'm not going to buy something cheaper that's going to be wearing out and breaking. What I really appreciate about Mother is that the sustainability aspect of it, it's so well built. Everything is just very, very efficiently designed. It all kind of serves a purpose. So that coupled with the ability for you to switch out the LED board when the LED board goes after it's supposed to be 10 years, but they are guaranteed for four years. You could just buy the LED board and switch it out. Assuming that you're going to be growing plants for the next decade, you're probably going to be spending less money on lights over that decade if you were to invest in really, really nice lights. So yeah, I just wanted to quickly talk about the few things I really, really love about this light before you see it kind of in action. So I haven't been using these lights for very long, only for just under a month. So I can't give you a lot of feedback on how the plants grow differently under the light. I will definitely show updates on how the plants are growing with the lights, especially with this shelf here because it is like regular room conditions. It is low humidity. I do not run any humidifiers anymore and there is really going to be a combination of light, nutrients, and temperature that's going to help these plants grow. Historically these plants have not been getting that much light so even in the few weeks that I've been using these lights the plants are definitely facing towards the light. I have moved plants out of like an exo or a tent onto this shelf with the light. I haven't seen any decline so far. So I'm definitely gonna post updates on how they do under the light. That said, 
I do have a coupon code for Mother Life. So the code is for $10 off US or $15 off Canadian. I, the amount that you get off depends on your currency, but the code is ALICE, all caps, and you will have to visit the link in my description box to activate that link so that it would work for you when you add it to your cart. If you if you are building a Christmas wish list, if you know someone who is a plant person and um, they are worthy of an investment light, this is a great gift. It is, it checks all the boxes because there's function, there's beauty, and there is just like a lasting positive impact on someone's life when they're able to grow their plants nicely. I cannot say enough good things about the way this was designed. They have other products that uh, the code should work with as well, but the plant spectrum to me is like the coolest thing they make that as it pertains to my life. Like I don't grow microgreens, I don't grow vegetables, I grow ornamental plants so this is this is the thing that's most useful to me so I'm really really grateful that they decided to send me one and give me a coupon code so um, you don't have to use the code obviously there's going to be other creators who have the same code it's obviously good to save some money I do make a commission if you purchase through my link but you absolutely do not have to use my link you absolutely don't even have to buy these lights as with all things that are well made or well designed it's going to cost a little bit more my thought process is that the likelihood of repeat spending to fulfill the same function or the same purpose is going to be much lower and you're going to get a return on your investment much quicker. So thank you again, Mother, for sending me these lights. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. But yeah, let's get started with the tour. So when you walk in the door now, this is what you see. First of all, this is what you see first. You guys would have seen these two XLs before. And then down here I have plants, some larger plants that are in regular room humidity and then another smaller XO. We'll get into that in a second, but um, just wanted to show you how the lights are set up right now. Also, I'm sorry if the camera work is wobbly. I'm trying my best right now to keep my hands steady, but you never know. I have the handheld tripod like I'm jammed into my torso, and then I have my hands on the, the viewfinders just to keep it as steady as possible. So hopefully it's not too shaky. But anyway, here's what the lights look like. I have it on this like little Ikea step stool kind of thing. Um, they don't make this thing anymore. I would like to get like a smaller, like cleaner stool for it. I just haven't found one that I really like yet, but I'm on the lookout. But yeah, this is kind of like my new backdrop and I have the lights facing this shelf here. So if you remember before I used to have kind of like a wooden unit here that had some plants on top. They had no supplemental lighting, so they were only getting light from that, like the cast off light from these two exos, which wasn't really good for them. They were getting just kind of pale, leggy. They were, they were not happy. So this is much nicer for them now. So I think I'm gonna go through it one, sh like kind of shelf at a time, and then we're gonna end up at my grow tent. But this is what I mean, like with the lights like this, you can't see any light from behind it. So it's not spilling out into the hallway, it's not spilling out into the other rooms, it's really just focused on that shelf. So now I'll just move the lights out of the way so I can show you the plants. So first of all, this shelf is the newest addition to this room. This is, I think, something like around three feet wide and around four feet tall. I ideally wanted a shelf that is taller than this, but the problem with this space is that I don't know if you've noticed this by now, but I have this sloped ceiling here. So I really can't have anything taller than about here. So this is the best I can do for now. It would be nicer to have one extra shelf on top and space to put plants above, but that's a luxury I don't have. So on top of the mother lights pointing forward, I also have two levels with barina lights on it as well. The reason for this is that without the brain lights, this room was just a little bit too dark. There were too many shadows. I didn't like the way that the plants looked. So I wanted lights from behind the plants as well, just to kind of light the background of the plants, if that makes sense. And this would also allow me to put plants like behind these ones. Should I have the need to like, I don't know, rehab something in somewhere bright? That would be an option for me. Right now, I just don't have that many plants. Like you're gonna see between all the exos and the tent that I've actually cleared up a bunch of space. So there's a lot of space for plants to go, 
but I'm actively trying not to bring any more plants into the house. So yeah, so up here I have on the left, this is an Anthurium Friedrich Stallii. I believe this was purchased as a pendens. But this does not seem like pendens to me. This looks a lot like um, photos I've seen of Friedrich Stallii and I've, it kind of matches the description as well. It's been growing so much better for me since um, since feeding it a lot more. So I've been feeding it with a lot more CalMag and it's been growing a lot more symmetrical, strappy leaves, which has been amazing. And then it's also just popped a leaf out here on this shelf. This used to live inside my tent and it's been ripped out of that enclosure. So far it's been doing just fine. It hasn't really skipped a beat. Over here is my green form Moraquianum. Um, it's suffered from a lot of underwatering, as you can see from this tip here, and this leaf here got, it got mangled coming out of the sheath, but um, it also suffered from underwatering, so I figured it used to live inside this XO, but I figured if it's out here I can access it a little bit better. This kept falling over in that XO, that XO just got way too full, so I'm gonna grow it out here. I know queens can do fine in room unity. Um, I just need to make sure it has enough light and it's watered sufficiently. <sighs> Next to it, I have um, what was imported as an SP Columbia, SP Silver, same thing. It's put out a really, really cute leaf recently. This one is so pretty, but I'd like for it to turn <laughs> this leaf forward and hopefully it will in the next few days. I have a bit of a confession to make. I'm kind of over this plant. That may come as a surprise to some of you because I've been obsessed with this plant for so long and I was hoarding them, but they just don't grow that well for me. And I don't know what it is really. I treat them kind of the same as I do my Gloriosum. And they just, I don't know, they're just a little bit, they grow a bit leggy. They don't know if they want to climb or if they want to crawl. And I don't, I just don't know. Me and him are kind of in a weird place right now. And then behind him, I have another one. This one is a birthday gift from my boyfriend. This one is also growing really leggy. So I moved them out here um, in the hopes that they'll kind of face forward because they used to live here and the light was a little bit too much for them. You can see some bleaching here. So this is going to be a lot further from the light, a lot farther from the light and uh, hopefully it'll do better. Over here is my Anthurium Black Crystallinum from Equiflora, I believe. So I moved this out for my tent, not only because I wanted to see a big Crystallinum leaf here because like this really, I really love how it looks on this shelf, but also because it is growing like completely spread eagle, like this leaf is all the way out here. Um, I mean, Crystallinums tend to do this, so I moved it out here so it had room to kind of spread its wings, but also because it was taking up way too much space in the tent. And I don't think it really needs to be in the tent. So yeah, I think it will enjoy some cooler temperatures out here. Next to that, I have my um, Bessier Aff. This is the second leaf that I put out in my care. It's a little bit less wonky, I guess, but it's got these little like dots, which I think are fungal. And they also lived in my exo before, which is not like very high humidity. So hopefully out here with more airflow, this will kind of fix itself. And it's in pond. I forgot to say the anthurium, the crystallinum, I moved it from soil into pond because I wanted to use um, this Elho pot, this Elho self-watering pot. And I find the anthuriums are quite thirsty. At least this one is. So I think I'll be able to keep up with the watering a little bit more in a self-watering pot. It's my first time using this pot for an anthurium. I think it'll be good. I also have another one or maybe two more of those Elho pots in case I really like it and I can move other plants into it as well. Over here is my Mykins. This one I brought over from like my office guest bedroom where I edit, where I sometimes film. Like when you see me on a bed, that's my guest bedroom. So I brought this over from here just cause I did like without this. Feels like kind of naked down here at the bottom. Feels like too much pot, not enough leaf. So I tucked this here. I don't know if I'll keep it here. Maybe I'll put something else that's kind of hanging. But overall, I wanted some like kind of foreground. It's really hard to see from the camera because it's kind of like flattening out all the dimensions, but I wanted leaves kind of like up front here. I wanted some above, and then I wanted some kind of having this like downward motion. I don't think I really accomplished that, but 
that's the intention here. I wanted to create a little bit of like textural and like layers and levels and stuff. So moving down to the next level, there are two Burina lights here. They are attached by Velcro ties. It's not focusing, but they're attached by Velcro ties and the uh, cable, they're kind of secured by, what are those things called? Uh, the wire ties. This is my, the bottom part of my Big Glorious one, the one that I chopped up in my repot video. Um, I'll throw the thumbnail up here, that video. I chopped up my Gloriosum. So this is the bottom. It hasn't really pushed out anything yet. Oh, actually, it has activated this growth point. Honestly, look at how long this stem is. I probably could cut it up into two more pieces, but I'm not sure if I want three more Gloriosums. Not that I don't want more Gloriosums, let's be real, but it's like too much space. This one already takes up so much space. So yeah, that's, that's him. There's a lot of leaves. I probably actually should cut it up so that these ugly parts of the plant can start growing something prettier. Next to it is my alopecia scalprum. I've talked about this so many times. I love this plant and it can actually take quite a bit of light or to be quite close to light without bleaching. When it used to live inside of this XO, the leaves would be like this close to the light and it wouldn't bleach. So I think it's gonna be really happy here. It's still in the same soil pot and it is pushing a leaf. It's really happy in this spot so far. Next to that is this like, it was imported as a plamanii, but it had almost no silver and it does have like the ruffled petioles and it, I don't know, it, to me, it's not quite plamanii, but it's not quite mame either. So yeah, I don't really know what this is. It's kind of cute. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about getting rid of that one. It doesn't really do much for me. Next to that is a uh, philodendron Dean McDowell. This was grown from like a leafless, like hunk of stem from Erin. It's been so satisfying to watch this grow bigger and bigger like from something this big to like a full on plant. It's just been really easy. The only thing about it is that it's kind of thirsty, but, but yeah, it's been doing really well. It's pushing a leaf right now. Definitely one of my favorite philodendrons. I think I in general do better with crawlers than I do with climbers. I don't know, I just, I, I think it's like the moss pole maintenance I can't really keep on top of. And that is it for that shelf. Down here is one of my original dark storm forgetting eyes that has definitely seen better days. I've hybridized this plant with one of Jing's plants before, and um, it is currently in flower. It's got a really, really sad looking flower here. It definitely needs a lot of rehabilitation. It's really, really pale. It's really underwatered and it's suffered a lot. So I've got it here kind of away from the light. I don't want it underneath the grow light here. I kind of want to just face the leaves outwards so they're not going to get burned. It is in soil and I'm going to try to keep it, I'm going to try to keep it watered. <laughs> Let's say that. Like this plant has so much potential once it's like healthy and dark. It's like the most beautiful, bullate, dark, delicious forgetty I ever. It's just, it doesn't look that way right now. Next to it is my um, Monstera Brazilian Common Form, which I potted up in a repot video. In that video, it was pushing out new leaf. So let me just show you what the newest leaf looked like. This is the first leaf that it pushed out of that auxiliary bud. So it was the funniest thing. Like when I, when it was coming out of the sheath, it was maybe like this big, but it had all these tiny little fenestrations. It, it just looked so wild. And then when it came out, this is what it looked like, which is kind of crazy for the first leaf out of an auxiliary bud on a Monstera. Like they usually revert to like crazy in size. All these like idiotic looking fenestrations. I thought this was the funniest leaf ever. And then immediately after that, it actually pushed out this leaf which looks like a regular Deliciosa leaf, also feels like a really regular Deliciosa leaf, although a little bit more leathery. The main leaf is like really, really plasticky. I just, I just cannot believe it's given me two leaf in the span of a few months. So yeah, it seems to be happy now. Quick root check. It's been rooting quite happily in here. I've been keeping it a little bit more wet because it came from a water rooted vessel. I find that when you um, go from water rooting to pond, you do have to keep the substrate a lot more wet. And um, I have the opposite example later on. I'm gonna talk about my Thai constellation where it went from pond to pond and I had to do the opposite. Next to that is another Anthurium forgetii. This one has silver veining. 
and this one is very cute. This one come, come. This one, <laughs> this one came from Equiflora, I think. It's just like a regular forgetty eye. Here's some underwatering stuff. It hasn't grown for a while. This one is not the happiest little forgetty eye. It looks really pale right now. It's not pale, it's just super backlit. This is um, another one of my large Gloriosums. This one I imported from Equigenera in April, I think it was, or maybe May, something like that. And it's it's been growing really nicely, although it's definitely slowed down since I took it out of the tent. I really like this one because the veins are so, like it definitely has a look to them. Like they all, all the veins kind of fork out like this and the, the leaf shape is a little bit more on the narrow side. It's very consistent with this look and I really enjoy this. It definitely needs a repot. The stem is crawling up the top here. I didn't really want to repot him because I didn't want him to look ugly and floppy and weird again. Um, before filming this video, so after I film this video, I'm gonna be able to repot him. Then down here is um, a philodendron, believe it or not, it is a Florida ghost. It's not a Florida green, although it looks just like a Florida green. It definitely does produce minty leaves, but it just doesn't stay. Like, this would have been the most recent leaf. It's so beautiful. Let me pull him out. This one was the most recent leaf. How? Freaking beautiful is that. I just love this leaf shape so much. It is covered in EFN right now. My hands are so sticky. But yeah, this leaf shape is just unreal. And I promise you it is a Florida ghost. I just don't understand why it doesn't want to grow ghosty leaves. Like everybody says that higher light gives more white, but this is the only minty-ish kind of leaf I have. This was so close to the light, it burned itself. So this is all burn marks from touching a grow light. Believe me, it got a lot of light. This used to live in my tent. Yeah, it definitely outgrew the space. I couldn't see any plants around it, so I took it out. It'll definitely do fine outside of the tent. I was just like, if I'm not gonna be able to get ghosty leaves with high light in the grow tent, then what's the point of keeping it in there? So I brought it out here. This was one of the first, like, rare uncommon plants I ever owned. The, the funny thing is like I, I walked into a local plant store with my boyfriend. This was at the beginning of COVID. We had gone there to purchase, I, I wanted a lilac tree for the backyard and I knew that they carried like um, flowering trees. So we went there and it was COVID and there was like three people allowed in the store at a time. So we waited out in the rain for like an hour and a half we were freezing and then we finally got in and then I saw this plant. It was a really, really small plant. I was like, oh, that's a cute shape. I thought it was $10 and then I paid. It was all kind of a blur. I got home, saw my receipt and my boyfriend was like, do you know this plant was $60? And I was like, nope, did not know that. This was before I had joined like any Facebook groups. I wasn't on Instagram or I didn't have a plant Instagram. So I really did not know any information about plants other than like what was on Google or what was, what was in nurseries. So. This was definitely something new for me. So this is a plant that I will I will never get rid of just because, I don't know, I just feel a lot of sentimental attachment to this being like one of my first, first like special plants, I wanna say, but it basically, I don't know, is, it, is this reverted? The leaf that's coming out looks kind of pale, but that actually looks pretty green to me. Anyway, enough about this guy. Over here, let me pull the ghost out of the way actually. This one is the Anthurium Magnificum that was pollinated. So here are the berries forming. Yeah, not, nothing much has changed since you would have last seen this in my last video. Yeah, it was it would have been my last video. So berries still look like that. Next to that is the Crystallinum, which was in flower, which I also showed in my last video. So the Spadix is emerged now, but it's not yet receptive. Um, not that I'm gonna pollinate him. I'm, my plan is to collect pollen from him and pollinate something else with it, which you will see later. Next to that is a Philodendron Genevievianum. I'll pull them out so you can see. This one I imported uh, late last year from Equigenera. Well, I didn't import it per se, like I bought it at the pop-up. I split it with Charmaine and Jing and it's grown okay for me. It's really, really rooted. I definitely neglected it, so it aborted at least one leaf and maybe two leaves. <laughs> I just recently just like jammed this bamboo stake in here and tied, 
tied the plant to the bamboo because like I couldn't be bothered with flopping over all the time. So usually when I can't be bothered with a plant, but I need to stake it, especially if it's out in regular room conditions, I will just use a bamboo stake and just like jam it in there. Half of the time I think that the plant really just wants support and I want it to grow straight. I don't necessarily want to mature this plant. I actually don't really want it to grow that fast, even. It, but it is kind of a fast grower or at least a steady grower. So all I'm looking to do with this plant is just kind of like keep it upright and stop it from stop it from aborting leaves every time. Oh, I'm getting tired. All right, up front here I have my variegated monstera. So this one, this one is my Thai constellation. I have a little story to tell for that one. And then this one is my yellow variegated monstera, which was uh, I think a messed up TC Thai constellation. This one responded so well to Great White. This is one of the Great White like success stories. Before Great White, by the way, I did not repot it between like pre-Great White and post-Great White. I only um, inoculated it by adding Great White to the water. So before getting Great White, this is the kind of leaves it was putting out. They're really, really underdeveloped. Like this probably should be like three times the size. It was a top cutting, but it was, it was producing a lot of um, juvenile leaves. There was a reverted leaf back here. So this was the last leaf it put out before Great White. And then this was the first leaf it put out after Great White, which is like a massive size up. And then pretty soon after that, it put out this fenestrated leaf. This was just like a very triumphant moment for me because I've been trying to grow this plant for like two years. It just refused to grow for me for the longest time. And now that it's finally growing, I'm really, really actually quite happy with it. So even though this is like a tissue culture type constellation, I do think they can revert because I think the bottom cutting that I had of this plant was definitely reverted. So you can see the stem is quite variegated on this side but I'm a little bit worried because the newest leaf, the fenestrated leaf, is looking pretty green in the stem. Um, but yeah, it's about to push out another leaf as well. Behind him is this very sad elbow. This is a plant that I got from Aaron. Um, I've been trying to grow it and propagate it so I can give it back to her. But what happened with it, okay, so backstory for this plant. This one, his name is Umberto because Erin likes to name all of her album Monsteras. So Umberto is a Christmas present from her boyfriend and I was like one day saying that I wanted an album and she's just like take Umberto and I was like okay and then I realized it was a Christmas gift and I got really upset but she wouldn't take it back so I've been trying to grow it but it kept growing juvenile leaves that were kind of low variegation so I was like if I'm gonna chop it I better like try to get more variegation back because if you know Erin you'll know that she doesn't fuck with low variegation elbows she only accepts perfect highly variegated textbook elbow monstera. So I chopped them up. I lost one cutting, I think maybe two cuttings. And then the bottom, I was hoping to kind of grow out because I had chopped it down closer to where I saw more variegation in the stem, but it fully reverted after that. So I recently chopped off the reverted part and we'll see what activates. Nothing has activated so far that I can see. So yeah, Umberto is a really, really sad story. That's still the plan to grow something nicer. I have another piece of Umberto you'll see later, but it's, it's also not worthy of being in Aaron's home. And then this one is my birthday, Jose Bono. I haven't shown it since I showed it that one time after I showed my wishlist plants for my birthday, but this one was the first leaf that grew in my care. And since then it's been growing really, really steadily. Like one, two, three, four, five, six leaves since then. And this newest leaf is the most highly variegated, but a little bit <laughs> asymmetrical, but it's been sizing up quite a bit. It's been such an easy, easy plant. I've been so happy with it. It just doesn't, like it doesn't need much at all. Like it gets like sunlight. It doesn't get tons of humidity or heat. People did tell me that it requires a lot of heat to kind of grow really fast and highly variegated, but I didn't have the space in my tent to grow him. And it's been going just fine out here. So. I've just been leaving him here. He's been such, such an easy plant. So yeah, that's the Jose. Okay, so back to this tie. This was another great white success story because this was another plant that wouldn't grow for me despite being like really, really heavily rooted. It used to be in like a really, really tiny like glass pot. It was such a brick of roots that I was like, okay, I'm gonna finally repot you now. 
and I did, and then immediately it started to yellow off leaves. I didn't even consider the possibility that this plant would get root rot. I don't know why. I was really, really confident with that root pot. It went from pond to pond. I had loosened up the root ball a little bit, actually quite a bit, and there was just so many roots and all of it, all of it rotted off. I got it into a fresh batch of pond and I cut off all the rotten roots, but it looks like I got rotted roots again. Quite a bit of rotted roots and then quite a bit of really, really healthy roots. Here's what I wanted to circle back on with uh, the transplant. So this one had gone from pond to pond, but this had gone from pond that I often underwatered. So it would always get a dry cycle in between the wet cycle. And then it went into a larger pot and it was a lot more wet and it took a lot longer to dry out. So that's, I believe is the reason why it rotted all its roots. So the second time I repotted it, I put it into pond and I didn't really water. I put the tiniest bit of water in it and I let it dry out and then it rooted really, really quickly in that environment. And I think maybe I just like watered it a little bit too deeply one day. I'm not too sure. So here's the thing with monsteras and pond. In my experience, if there are like some rod roots and some actively growing nice roots, because you can see here that this one is the actively growing healthy root, right? But then we also have some rod roots here. I'm keeping a close eye on it to see how the the healthy roots progress. But if the healthy roots continue to be healthy, I'm actually not going to repot this and I'm not gonna get the rotted roots out because I think that with variegated monsteras specifically, in my experience, when taking them out, they can just like drop all their roots suddenly. Actually, not even with variegated monstera, like this monstera did the same thing as well. So while it's not good to have like the rotted roots in there, if the healthy ones continue to be healthy and it continues to grow new roots, I'm gonna let the bacteria do its thing. Just leave the rotted roots in there because I did that same thing with this Monstera. You can see in the vessel here, there are black roots. They've been in here forever. I have not done a single thing to them and it's continued to grow healthy roots. So it's been well over a year of those rotted roots being in there and like me doing nothing about it and it's actually been okay. So I'd rather have some rotty roots in there than risk it dropping all of its roots by being repot. We're moving on to the small exo here. So I had originally brought this exo to the basement in order to sell, but then I kind of decided not to sell it. And just recently I brought it back up here to house some rehabs. I don't know. I thought I, it would be nice to have an extra exo in here for small plants because as my plants are getting larger, the smaller ones are really getting kind of lost between them and it's harder to see. But currently that's not what this is. This is kind of just like, like a, a waiting room for, I, want, I was going to say waiting room for losers, but they're not all losers, but some of them are losers. Some of them are just small plants that don't really fit anywhere right now. So back here is my ficus villosa. I almost forgot the name. It wasn't doing that well because it was getting not enough light. It was in a larger X, so it was getting shaded from too many plants from above. So it kind of slowed down the growth, but let me see, the moss is still wet. So yeah, it's um, it got dried out as well because I was not seeing the plant. So in here is gonna do a lot better. I'm gonna be able to keep on top of the watering a lot more and it's more of like a terrarium environment and I can kind of spray in here and keep the exo a lot more humid. Because it is such a small exo, it'll stay humid for longer. Like the plants are packed so closely together and the enclosure is so much smaller. Next to that is a variegated Heteroecium var oxycardium that is from Charmaine. I am trying to root it right now. I put it onto a lazy moss pole. It has activated growth, but it's growing really, really slowly. It is recovering from a thrips infestation. It's clear of thrips as far as I can tell, so it's just a waiting game right now. I'm, I am also trying to root it because it's not really well rooted either. Next to that is a plant I'm trying to decide whether I'm getting rid of. This one is a variegated Epipremnum albo. Epipremnum panatum albo. It grows way too freaking fast. So I had... So I had to put it on this pole, right? With the intention of getting it to fenestrate and grow up, but then it was like kind of turning this way. I couldn't be bothered to maintain this plant and keep it upright. Like if you own one of these plants, you know how fast they grow. It's like a new leaf every week and I couldn't keep up with it. So it was like growing sideways and it grew down the shelf and it was trailing on the ground. So I just chopped the end of it off and I threw that cutting away and it's uh, 
I don't think it's activated anything because I wasn't really watering this plant either. I just, I don't know. I just, I like this plant and yet it's such a nuisance. It grows way too fast. I think I don't really want plants that grow all that fast. I'd rather have a plant in a perfect world, give me a leaf like once a month, but the, the growth is like significant and it's like a nice size up. That would be my ideal situation, but this one grows way too fast. Same with like Philodendron Gigas. They grow too fast, it's too much to manage, and especially if it's a climber, it becomes too much. Like if this was a trailing one, and if it looked good trailing, I might be more inclined to keep it. As of right now, I think I'm gonna rip it off the pole because I want the vessel back, and then I don't know, either give it away or throw it away. Um, and then back here is, is just the best specimen of philodendron glorious you've ever seen. It is so perfect. Like look at this new leaf. It is so nice. Like I am so blessed. So this is an example of when you don't try with a plant, um, what can happen and yeah. This is what happens. It's uh, it's just screaming out for help and I'm like, I'm sorry I can't help you. I mean, I can, but I won't. I mean, I will, but I shorn't. Down here is a cup of cuttings. Well, not cuttings, but these were plants that had chopped off of moss poles and I, I'm trying to water root them again and get them onto um, more permanent substrate, but this one is a sodoroy. It has that like, quote unquote variegation. Um, this one I got from Charmaine, so you would have seen that in her video if you watch her Sodoroy XO, her Silver Garden kind of uh, cleanup video. So this is a cutting from that plant. It's put out a leaf in this water. Let's see. Yeah, it's looking like it has a lot of that like weirdo variegation as well. In there I also have a Gigas cutting, which is really, really sad. This little taquito here. That's like one of the losers. Another loser here is this ugly anemia uh, pictum tricolor. Yeah, underwatered. <laughs> I don't know. It's not fun to grow this plant. I know it can be done. I know it can be done. That, that's why it's in here. I do like this plant. I grow this plant for my boyfriend because like as all men are, they're like, oh, the camouflage plant. That's so cool. Can I get one? So I got him one and I'm trying to grow it, but I'm never able to grow it nicely. But if I could get like a cute tree of this, that would just be the most wonderful thing. So I am holding on to it, even though they're like everywhere. I, pro I could probably go to the nursery and get one for like $5 and be way nicer than this, but I'm kind of determined to glow this one back up. Um, next to that is uh, Philodendron Burley Marks Fantasy. One of my favorite like small philodendron. One of my favorite climbing philodendrons, so it's not doing great. It's on this like driftwood kind of pole that I had originally tied uh, sphagnum moss and as well as live sphagnum moss to. I didn't keep the moss wet enough so that we, all that moss turned into just regular dead sphagnum moss. So the plan with this is to get it onto one of Lauren's poles, like the honeycomb um, pre-assembled like plastic poles. I'd like to get it filled with tree fern fiber. So I want to do tree fern fiber pull with it in soil or maybe just tree fern fiber all the way down. And I'd like to see it shingle up the up the pole and then when it reaches the top, what, I'll, what I'd like to do, what I plan to do is just like cut the top off, stick it back down and shingle that one back up the side of it. If you can imagine, like it'll be like a pole and then like a couple of really Marks Fantasy is kind of like climbing up the top. I think that would look really nice. And then this is a Anthurium Chia Pazens. Chia pa yeah. Chia Pazens crossed with the Vera Pazens from Amanda. This is not a loser. It's pushed out a new leaf. This plant has been a really easy and really fast grower. It's really leathery, definitely has that hybrid vigor. I just don't really know where to put him right now. So I just shoved him in here. It's been maybe like a week or two that he's been in here but he won't stay in here forever. Next to that, this one is um, kind of like what they're calling Anthurium Hoffmanii X from Indonesia. I featured him in a <laughs> Plants I Kill video and then um, it came back to life. I had made peace with the fact that it was dead and it wasn't dead anymore. So I don't know, I've already said my goodbyes in my heart, but he's back. So I'll just let him be here. You can stay. But just so you know, 
I thought you were gone. This is what's sold to me as an Anthurium Angam Arcanum F. I don't know why he's so sad. I honestly don't. It's super crispy. I thought it was underwatering. I don't think it is. But yet, these roots that had escaped the pot are looking really, really like shriveled up and dry. So it must be underwatering. Like this, that's the root of most of my plant problems is underwatering. I can see that it's trying to push out a leaf. If it will focus. Pushing out a leaf, focus. I think, yeah. It's trying to push out a leaf, but this is a rehabby plant. I don't think I really want to rehab it, so I might give this away. I'm not sure yet. Back here is another rehabby Coriosum. Oh, it's so cute and it's so sad. This one was, I thought it was potted in Killer Pond. Maybe it wasn't potted in Killer Pond, it was just like severely underwatered. And it had been ripped out from an exo, put into regular room conditions, and it ripped itself a few times. So it was not happy. It was not happy. So I'm sure it's happy to be back inside an exo. And then finally, next to that is a uh, philodendron El Choco Red or Rubra Juvenile, which hates me. And I'm starting to hate it. I do love El Chocos, but they've not been fun to grow for me at all. So, yeah. I don't know what to do with this. This looks also fungally. Like it was in an EXO that had some fungal issues. Like this definitely looks fungal to me. It has like this powdery mildew look. Maybe it shouldn't be in here with the other plants. Yeah, let's take them out. But anyway, I don't know if I wanna keep trying to grow this plant that obviously doesn't wanna be grown by me. So I don't know. It, it really does baffle me. Look at that leaf. Look at that leaf. But, Oh. All right, next up is this EXO here. Before we do that, I need to take a quick break because my arm feels like it's gonna fall off. So you're gonna take a quick break as well. We are about halfway through now and I am so tired. Let me see my eyeballs. This is as much as I can open it right now. So we are gonna power through, although my camera's about to run out of battery, so I need to go get my battery pack and then we're gonna get started on this EXO. My thing is so funny when he comes in here. Let's see. <laughs> can you sit down? Can you bump it? Okay. Good boy. Can you look? Yes, you can. You're a good boy. What's that like doing? <laughs> You're so cute. You are so cute. You are such a baby. Can you do a spin? Can you do a spin? Yes, you can. Oh, that's... Yeah, complete it. Complete it. Oh, complete it. Spin. High five. Good boy. Funny little nugget. Okay. I'm gonna continue filming now. Is this is the Huxley show now. Should I continue the show? All right, here we go. So I have my battery pack plugged into my camera and that battery pack is like stuffed into my pants. So <laughs> my camera is not gonna be as mobile as it was before. Okay, so first of all, wait, let me back up. So this is the uh, two foot by three foot EXO. It is 18 inches deep as well. This is the big one I've had for a long time. So if you've been here on this channel, you would have seen this before. I showed this in my last plant tour as well. It's much emptier than ever. I recently just got everything out here and cleaned. It has um, the wire grid at the back, which is now actually held up by hooks. If you watch my original plant tour, I, I had this grid held up by suction cup hooks like that was stuck to the glass at the back. But every now and then, like every maybe like, I don't know, six weeks or so, I'd have to go in and like re-suction it. Otherwise the whole thing would come crashing down. So I said, screw it. I just put hooks on and it's hooked onto the back. The only thing is now the uh, mesh on the top no longer sits flush, but I don't really care. This means that I can like put heavier plants onto the back without worrying about the grid falling down. So it's been a lot nicer. I'm not too concerned about humidity for my exos. Only The only enclosure that really gets high humidity is my tent and this little exo here, which I forgot to say, um, I have a piece of glass up here. This is just like a glass I got from a picture frame, like an Ikea photo frame. So it's not very sturdy. It can't really hold any weight on top, but it is holding in more humidity. But anyways, back to this EXO. I haven't had a hygrometer in here for a really long time. Basically all my hygrometers broke and I just stopped replacing them because I just, I realized I didn't really care how much humidity there was. Like once I knew 
and once I kind of had this like baseline knowledge in my head of how humid my exos were that I didn't really need to know what it was on a daily basis. You'll see three Barina lights up here. I actually have two pointing downwards into this enclosure. The other one is actually pointing sideways. As you can see here, it's actually pointing at the top shelf of this wire shelf because the mother light isn't going to reach here as much as it is reaching these levels. So I can always like, like raise the mother light more, but for now this light, this level is not getting enough light. So that's what this light is for. There's some dead Spanish moss. There is like some, some aquarium wood and some cork wood with some like what was once live sheet moss tied to it. And then I have another piece of cork wood, like a cork wood trunk thing, which is housing this plant, which is a uh, Monstera albo. So this was one successful propagation from Umberto, the one, the albo I showed earlier. It is pretty low variegation. I mean, it's, it's not reverted. So I will get this on a pole and kind of grow it out and see if the variegation increases. And if it does, then I can give it back to Erin if she wants another one back. But she's been so busy lately with weddings that I don't think that she has time to take on more plants, but I do think she needs a piece of Umberto back eventually. So whatever ends up being the nicest, I'll give back to her. Next to it here is a Philodendron Brosio Catafilum. <laughs> very, very small. In fact, like every leaf is identical in size. Like, look at it, it's just a little bush. This leaf is pretty much the same size, that leaf. And the newest leaf looks like it's about to be the same size as well. And I don't mind at all. I don't want to repot this. I don't want this to grow large. I kind of want it to just kind of stay the same. It's in pond and it's constantly drying out. I wouldn't say it's like super happy because it's always getting dried out and it's kind of too close to the light at this point, but I don't really know what else to put there. So he'll, he'll, be, he'll be fine, he'll be fine. And then over here is a dark Waraquinum. This is also from Erin also dries out quite a bit it's recently like gone to the brink of like melting like this leaf when i noticed it was dry this leaf was like liquid it was so soft and it's much better now but it is dropping a few leaves so i um gave it a couple of drinks like a few days apart and it is perked back up and this this plant i'm trying to pick it up this plant has like three growth points so you can see like one on the left here one in the middle and the one on the right and it hasn't really sized up, but I'm sure it will in time. This is my only dark queen. And then back over here, this is my Anjula pothos or my Epipremnum aureum Anjula. I had a video where I made a this like D-shaped moss pole. I made it self-watering. Full disclosure, this is the only DJ moss pole I ever made for myself. I made another one for Charmaine and I never made them again because I just, I don't know, I just didn't think that this was the greatest pole for me. Yeah, I just, I think the lazy moss pole is much more functional, so it doesn't want to focus so much. But down here, these are like the leaf sizes that we were starting with. And yeah, it did, it did size up by the time it goes to about here, like, compared to size of my hand, it's much bigger than like these ones down here. The funny thing is like it never really rooted into this pole. I stopped using the self-watering feature of this pole because the soil was staying too wet, so it was getting a bit of root rot. So I just let the moss pole dry out. In fact, this tried to root into the pole from up here and it was kind of like leaning forward and I ripped it out because I didn't want it to like grow that way. So it really has been sizing up without any assistance from the pole. I don't want to build another pole and get it growing even taller, but the only alternative would be to chop it again. So that's probably what I'll actually do is chop it down here with this um, aer aerial root and then get it started on a new pole. My arm is so tired and I had moved this plant out of the way, but this one is my Anthurium crystallinum luxurium cross. That's from Amanda. It's beautiful. This is the first leaf to grow in my care. It took a little bit longer because it was growing in regular room conditions. So it spent some time rooting and then it put out this leaf finally. And in my experience, luxurians leaves take so long to grow and I'm not really sure what this one will do, but my ex my expectation is that it's gonna like expand and um, grow as slow as an ex uh, ex <laughs> luxurians leaf. But yeah, this one is very exciting. I didn't want to keep it in my tent because I wanted to look at this like more often and it seems to be doing fine in lower humidity. So yeah, that one's there. Next to it, you can see this new leaf. 
This is an Anthurium King of Spades. This leaf, it looks like it's gonna be a decent size. <clears throat> this was the leaf before it. I brought this to Charmaine's house for a video where we show like which plants, um, like who's growing it better. And it got all scratched up in transit, like when it was in the box with all the other plants. So I got a lot of like scratches on it, which was a shame. Otherwise it was a really, really cute like round leaf. So I'm excited for this one to grow out. I also need to make sure I keep on top of the watering because this pot is quite full of roots and it dries out really, really fast. So once this leaf expands, which in my experience, it can be like up to a month for the King of Spades, um, I'm going to get this pot into a much bigger pot. Next to it is my Anthurium Politiflorum. I don't know what's going on with it. These leaves are all curled. The lower leaves are curled, like this one here. You can see that it's curled and it's like lower back on the stem here. The newer leaves are looking really, really nice. This is the newest leaf. And this was the plant I was going to hybridize with the Crystallinum that's in, currently in flower. This inflow, honestly, it's taking forever. And the Spadix just refuses to emerge out of the spathe. My dreams of pollinating this Politiflorum may not happen, but We'll wait and see. Because it's taking so long, I'm gonna have to collect pollen from another plant and pollinate this plant. What I wanted to do is collect pollen from this plant and pollinate something else because I am i don't want this plant to decline. And pollinating it, especially if it's successful even or even like semi-successful, as in like it, it pollinates and then it grows berries for a little bit and then aborts. Like I, I, I've heard that that happens a lot with Politiflorum. So even if that happens, I expect that this plant will decline a bit and I really don't want it to. So yeah, I'm, I'm semi undecided. I still think I'm going to pollinate it. I'll still give it a shot, but that all depends on whether this inflow continues to develop. And then finally down here is this Pappy Hybrid. This was from a supplier, like a gift. It was like a freebie. It's in pond. It seems to be okay rooted. It's been in pond for quite a while. It's doing okay. It's not like crazy rooted or anything. This one grows like darker, more elongated leaves, but the leaves, oh, you can see this one has like this willowy stuff too. I'm probably gonna have to treat this with like copper fungicide or something. This is the same kind of stuff that was on my Warocreanum, but I'm not seeing it on like the Politiflorum next to it. It's been living here for basically all its life with me and it doesn't have that. So I can also see it on the queen back here as well. There's something about this exo that there's some fungal issues with certain velvety type anthuriums. But anyway, this one was really cool when it was emerging. Um, I'll see if I can find a photo to throw up here, but this one had a really, really like bluish emergent leaf. So that was really cool. I'll see how this one grows out. And then over to the right, this is my newest EXO. This one was a gift from Lauren. This EXO as well as this shelf I got from Lauren. This was um, when it was in her shop. This EXO was on this shelf, so she didn't need the shelf anymore. So. I got both of them from her. They've been really nice, a perfect fit. It only hangs off the side ever so slightly. So it's a pretty secure fit. The only thing is because the sides of the, the shelf are slightly higher than the middle of the shelf, the left side of the EXO would have um, been kind of like tilted downward. So that's why you see wood down here. So the wood here is for the middle parts of the EXO just to make it level with the edges of the EXO. This one also has two Barina lights up here. I'm gonna be able to keep them straight because the wires of them come down here and they are synced to the back and they, I have one outlet tower here, which everything here is plugged into that and that's all plugged into one timer. So these lights all come on and turn off at the same time. This EXO has never been that full and currently is not very full, which I'm okay with. Here's the thing, I used to keep my exos a lot fuller, but now my plants, I mean, at least some of them are getting too big to be housed in any sort of greenhouse. So the, the bigger ones either are going to be here or they're gonna take up more space here. And even though like the footprint of the pot doesn't take up that much space, like you can see the pot, there's so much empty space around it, but the plant itself is going to take up a lot more real estate. So I've been, 
okay with keeping this a little bit less full. I know it can be fuller than this, but I don't plan on stuffing this full of plants like I used to. But anyway, this one also has a wire grid at the back. I have two hanging side by side, also held up by hooks so I can freely hang things on here without worrying about it crashing down. So this one I have like the little wire shelf. I wish it was black. I could paint it, I guess, but I didn't. And like I could put pond plants in here and not worry about the weight. So over here is an Anthurium Magnificum from Amanda. We mistakenly ID'd this as a Crystal X Lobes, one of her hybrids, but this was actually Magnificum. I actually have the wrong tag in it. So this is a Magnificum of hers, which is quite dark. I think it's ready to put out a leaf, but it hasn't been doing the best with me. It, ha it actually had two leaves when I got it and it, it um, one leaf died and it's yet to put out another one. My arms feel like they're gonna fall off. Okay, next to it is a, <laughs> who can tell what this is? This is an Anthurium, no it's not. It's a Philodendron Summer Glory. Let me bring it down here so my arms don't have to be so tired. So this one is a newish hybrid to the market, I think. Um, it's a unknown Macaulay's hybrid, hybridized with Gloriosum. The moment I saw this plant on Facebook, I fell in love. These are kind of like hitting the nurseries now. And they're like an elongated, semi like buttery, almost velvety, but with a little bit of a shine. And they have a bit of, they do look Gloriosum-esque, but just longer. It had some root rot when I got it, it was in soil. So I rerooted it. Oh no, it didn't have root rot, it had stem rot. So I chopped it and I'm rerooting it. I don't see roots, but I do see that it's trying to push out a leaf. I'm just gonna leave it be and let it, do, let it do its thing, give it lots of light. So it lives there for now. Another forgetty eye. <laughs> this one is one that is like more sharp, more elongated. It seems like this leaf here has that sharp look. This leaf is looking quite cute. Yeah, all the leaves are like more like, they like tapered down at the ends. I thought this one would be really cool to kind of grow out and see how it matures. This is an Anthurium subsignatum crossed with the Papillolamnum, also from Amanda. This plant did not do well for me. I've actually lost like two or three leaves from it. And um, what I ended up doing was I ended up chopping off a couple of its offshoots as insurance mainly, but one is actually for Jane, one is actually from Charmaine. And I kept this part of the plant to see what will happen, but I don't see much root growth on it. And I'm very afraid. I'm very afraid that it's gonna keep declining and get like, I don't know, stem rot or something. I'm not quite sure that there wasn't much wrong with it when um, it was dropping leaves. It just had some rotted roots, but the majority of the roots were looking okay. So I'm not really quite sure. Um, but yeah, I, I transferred it from pond into tree from fiber just in the hopes of it being a little bit less wet and we'll see what happens. Over here is a Rufidophora pertusa. It's on a lazy pole. You wanna see all the way down there. There is a lazy pole and it's <laughs> it's outgrown it like 10 leaves ago and I haven't extended the moss so the pole goes up to here. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's like it's protesting by not giving me any fenestrations and I'm not really doing anything about it. It's just back there. Honestly, I could get into a bigger pot. Here's what I could do. I could get into a bigger pot. I could extend the pole and also chop it like down here or maybe even down here. And with raffis, in my experience, I find like the first or second leaf can be like massive without reverting too much in size. Like it wouldn't put out a bunch of dinky leaves and then slowly mature again. Like the first leaf that comes out can be really, really big. So I might do that, honestly. This is kind of a low priority for me because like raffis I find are quite difficult to grow. Although this one, I is a little bit easier and a little bit, like the growth pattern's a little bit more tidy than the Tetrasperma in my experience. They're so similar, don't get me wrong, they're so similar, but I find this one just kind of a bit nicer, a little bit less unruly. And then in front of it here is another forgetty eye. I think what should happen is that you guys should be taking a shot every time I show a forgetty eye. So this is one, I don't remember where I got this, I must have imported it when I was importing tons of forgetty eyes. And this one has suffered from underwatering. 
As you can see, I think it's actually still in moss. I can't remember if it's all moss or just moss top dressing, but either way, it's not doing great. It would probably do better in soil if it's not already in soil. Down here, in front of the forgetty eyes, are two little majestics that I've con contemplated throwing them out. I won't throw both of them out. I might give one away. One I will always keep because it was a gift from Charmaine and I will try to grow it up. I know she would want me to try harder with this plant, but Sodoroi and Sodorini and this plant have not been my friends. I know Charmaine's really good at these plants. I am not very good at these plants, so it might be worth just trying to grow out just for the heck of it and see what happens, but yeah. <laughs> They're just here right now. I kept them down here just so they can be far away from the light because if you haven't grown Majestic before, they are so easy to bleach. In front of it is my pride and joy, my Florida beauty. It recently got repotted and a moss pole extension. So the moss pole, it had reached the top of the moss pole, I think around here. So I had just reached the top of the moss pole. So I was actually on time with this extension and then I just like basically I stuck another piece of plastic into it and it held itself pretty well because there were so many roots in the pool and then I stuck you can see here one of these like wire sticks that I don't even know where to get these from I actually got this from Jing I think from like a plant I purchased from her I stuck that down just kind of like keep the pole like vertical and then I put more ties around it to kind of hold it together so it's not like the most I don't know, stable structure ever, but it is doing the job. Now, if you remember, this one used to grow in my tent, but it is way too big. There, it will not fit in the tent anymore. It's not like my Gloriosum, which will kind of like contain itself because it is a crawler, but this one, because it is a climber, it was climbing up and hitting the ceiling. And you can see on this leaf, we have burn from hitting the grow lights up there. And where is the other burn? Like here. And then you can see on the newest leaf here, a little bit of burn happened as well. So I moved this out and um, I'm gonna let it grow in lower humidity. It's not gonna love it, but I think it's tough enough to take the transition. It's so beautiful, you guys. I love this plant so much. Just like I love the ghost, this one is just, oh, it's one of my like champs this year. Like. It's one of the plants I tried to glow up and it responded super well to it because at the beginning of the year, let's see, we were working with leaves like this size and here, like very juvenile looking leaves. Sorry, it's really hard to show. And then these were one of the first leaves grown after the pull, I believe. Honestly, at that point, it was putting out a leaf like maybe once uh, every five, six weeks. Like it was a very slow grower and it just absolutely took off after getting onto this lazy pole. And it just kept maturing with every single leaf, kept getting bigger and bigger. It does not want to drop any leaves at all. So it's, it's I don't know, I think it's like 14 leaves at this point and it's getting more and more mature. This one's gonna get quite a bit bigger as it expands. So it's gonna be probably at least this size. Can we just appreciate the leaf shape of like the Florida family? And so just easy going with humidity. I think it's not gonna grow as fast in this XO as it did in the tent because it is cooler. And I, and I find warmth to be like the biggest contributor to fast growth. As long as it doesn't revert it back in size, I'm okay with it. So this leaf is looking like it's gonna be very low variegation. There's just yellow down here. Looks like all of this up here is green, which is fine because it tends to do that. Every few leaves or so, it'll put out a, quite a green one and they'll go like straight back to like high variegated. Leaves. So I find it actually looks, makes the plant look pretty cool overall because you will see a lot of variation between the leaves. I'd like to get this slightly like elevated a bit more just to get a little closer to the light, but I haven't quite gotten the right riser for it yet. So like I said, um, the plant room isn't in its like final form right now. There's still a lot of like moving around to do. All right, now down here is another manjula. It's in pond. This one I got from Lauren. I'm trying to root, oh. Yeah, we got a bunch of roots in here. I'm trying to root it and my plan is to get it onto a pole. And I thought it would be cool to get like multiple cuttings up a really wide pole and get them to size up simultaneously. I just don't know if it's gonna work out in practice. Like if one's gonna 
grow way faster than the other and it's gonna look a little bit silly so I might just get them onto individual poles but also this one is slightly low priority I gave one cutting to Charmaine's the the nicer one she would have bought repotted it fairly recently in a video and I kept this one I should get it onto support soon though because it's gonna keep growing really small leaves and I'm gonna have to like chop it back otherwise it's gonna look really silly over here next to it is my philodendron linamii i've shown this a couple times this one was imported around april i think one of my first import videos was with this plant and this was one of the let me see the second leaf i think to grow in my care it's fairly nice and i've only recently realized how thick and leathery linamii leaves are like if i were to compare it to like let's say this patriciae this one is, it's got a nice texture to it, but this one is definitely thicker, more leathery. My hands are so sticky with EFN right now. The exciting thing is this is finally giving me like really pink emergent leaves. So I hope the camera can pick up the color. I think it's coming off more orange on camera, but it is really, really pink in real life. And I was really excited to see this come out because previous leaves were not this pink. So I'm excited that it's actually giving me pink and it's pink all the way down the petiole. I recently chopped off a stupid leaf because it was, <laughs> you can see right here. I'm not one to chop leaves that I don't like, but this one really pissed me off. It was growing like this. It went like this and then like the leaf would dip down and then curve back up. Like it was taking up so much space. So it pissed me off enough that I chopped it off. So now I'm enjoying this plant more. I didn't pay that much for this plant. I wasn't paying like the crazy prices for Line MBI. It was like, I think 50 or $60 US. It's more expensive than I wanted to pay for a plant that I wasn't super, super excited about, but it's definitely growing on me. Down here is my Anthurium Nigrolaminum GG, AKA SP Napo. It's rooted really well in pond. It's been slow growing for me though. This is the only plant, no. This is the only leaf that has grown in my care. It's about the same size as the previous leaf. I don't really know what it wants. Maybe it wants more light. And it's not looking like it's ready to burst a new leaf yet. So it's been slightly slower for me, I think. I, yeah, it might probably is a light thing. Now that I think about it, I probably could get it into higher light. Over here is my Anthurium Bastard from Amanda which is possibly a Magnificum Forgetii cross. Like it looks like it has traits of both of these. Like it has that protruding sinus like Magnificum. Um, it has slight angles in the petiole. It's not square. And um, other leaves on Amanda's plants have a few sinus. So Mag Forgetii is the possible ID. Now it is flowering. You can see a flower back here. So I don't know if, I mean, I'm not gonna be able to ID it by the inflow, but maybe someone else can. And uh, I think it'll push out a leaf pretty soon after that. I have not grown any leaves yet. I've only grown that inflow. And then up here is my Philodendron Patriciae. This was imported, I think, maybe like a year and a half ago or like early last year. I got this plant from Charmaine summer of last year, so summer of 2021. And it was like a mid cut, single leaf mid cut, and it's this size now. So the original leaf is actually gone. And the first leaf that I grew on this plant is also gone. So this would have been the second leaf that I grew. And they've just been continuously sizing up since then. And just, I love this plant. It's so easy going. It's very thirsty. I'm watering it like every week, but it's been very forgiving. Like it, I moved this out of my tent, it did not throw a fit, it's continuing to grow. In fact, it looks like it's about to push out a really big leaf. So I cannot complain about this plant. It's so nice and it's pretty close to the light and it's kind of tolerant of high light as well. Like it is lightening a little bit up top, but nothing like another philodendron mite. So I just, I can't say enough good things about this plant. It's so, in my experience, it's not, the diva that uh, a lot of people have kind of made it out to be. Maybe I just got lucky with this one. It's in soil and it does not have a pole, although it probably would appreciate a pole. Well, in the back here, I have this like birch wood stick. I thought it was cute. I found it at a reptile store because I'm always at the reptile store because we have reptiles. So whenever I see cool sticks, I just pick one up. I'm not sure what to do with it yet. So right now it's just kind of like propped up in the corner. 
In front of the Patricia is my philodendron UPI, one of my birthday gifts from the girls. This was my favorite leaf when I saw it at Lauren's place. I'm not gonna be able to get it out, but it's, it is finally rooting. Like I just checked it the other day and there's like a big long root kind of coiling around the pot and we've got, if the camera will focus, two growth points, one long one here and up here there's another one. I don't know if it's gonna keep both growth points active, but we do have two growth points. And one leaf actually did yellow off and die. You now it is just the one leaf, but the one leaf held on really, really well. So once this plant gets going and starts to grow, I'm gonna need to um, evict it out of this exo because every UP I've ever seen like really just like grows spread eagle and it's gonna take up a lot of horizontal space. So it's not gonna be able to fit inside this exo like it, unless it was like an exo purely dedicated to this UPI. So what I'll probably end up doing is growing it out here on this shelf. Last but not least, my Monstera Escaletto. I did not expect to love this plant so much, but it has been such a rewarding plant to grow. Like I grew it from a node this big with roots and just over a year ago and now we're here, like every leaf has sized up. Every leaf is just better than the last. It's growing really nice, tight internodes. It's on a, it's gonna be really hard to show you, but it's on a lazy pole. You can see how tight those internodes are. It's in the original pot that I put it in like a year plus ago. It, it's due for a repot for sure, um, but it's like non-stop growing. This leaf is just finishing hardening off and it's about to push out a new one. I would love to see this plant more. Like I, I would rather not cover it with a bunch of leaves, but this plant bleaches quite easily. Even under like 10 watt lights, it's gonna bleach. You can see like a little bit of bleaching happened on the previous leaf. So in order to kind of protect it as it's getting taller, I had to like place this like Patricia above it and kind of keep it shaded this way. I can still see glimpses of it. So I'll just have to be careful when the next leaf comes out that it has space to grow out. Again, I probably will move things around, but I definitely wanted to keep it shaded from above. <sighs> that is this side of the room done. My hand feels like it's gonna fall off. So I'm just gonna back you up and kind of pan around to show you what I just toured you through. So we have the shelf here with some supplies at the bottom. I didn't really go through the supplies, it's nothing really that special. One shelf here with two XOs, so the two foot by three foot, and then the three foot by three foot. And then we have the smaller XO here, which is um, 18 inches by two feet tall, or one and a half feet by two feet. Literally, I feel like my arm is gonna fall off. I, my arms are so tired. I don't know how people do this. We're gonna power through. We just have the tent left to do, so let's open her up. So this tent, I used to be, I used to have it in my Amazon storefront. I bought this tent because it was quite cheap, but I don't think it's available anymore. Either they don't make it anymore, or they don't sell it on Amazon anymore. I just, either way, I can't find it anymore. I think it was like $70 and it's a four foot wide by five feet tall and two feet deep. But I wanted this one because it had reflective um, metallic lining rather than white. I wanted to be able to reflect light all around, reflect warmth back onto the plants. And I liked it because it was cheap and it would fit into this room. I couldn't fit anything much deeper than two feet. I think I could probably get away with a foot on either side, like a foot taller and a foot wider. In fact, that'd be actually quite nice. And I also like that it had like a viewing window on the front so you can open it up and look inside. It keeps humidity around 80 to 90% as I last remember it. And again, I don't use hygrometers right now, so I don't really, really know, but it was like 80 to 90%. It's always, there's always a blast of humidity and heat whenever I open up the, the tent anyways. So if you've been following this channel, you know that I love my grow tent. It's the place where I put my plants that I want to see grow. I rehab a lot of plants here. My most precious plants are in here for the most part, the, like the more finicky ones. And the plants just love it in here. It's been so nice to grow with a grow tent. I mean, the grow tent is ugly. It's just this big black and green box, but it's been such a joy to grow plants inside of it and to be able to grow plants much larger than I ever have been. If you are on the fence about getting a grow tent and you have the space for it, I really highly recommend it. If you don't mind 
there being an ugly thing in your house. So this is my plant room. So I really don't mind having a grow tent here, but I wouldn't want this tent in my general living space. So if you don't have like a like a dedicated room for your plants or a room to yourself that you can put a tent in without in, like intruding on someone else's space, then I highly, highly recommend it. All right, so on the left here, I have a, I think it's like a just under three foot wide shelf. This is an Amazon Basics shelf. It comes with wheels, actually. I removed the wheels so that it could actually fit vertically in this tent because you can see that it basically hits the top here. And then on the right here, there's just some empty space that I've um, used grids to be able to hang plants up. And I've got grids all the way down to here. And then I have some empty space here for some bigger plants, some kind of plants that don't really have a spot. Other than the bottom level, I've freed up a lot of space in this tent. I've thrown out a lot of plants. I've also moved a lot of plants out in order to put in that open shelving, the new shelf here. So I actually have quite a bit of space here for plants to grow. One of my most frustrating things this year was not being able to see my plants because everything was so overgrown. So like imagine if you were trying to like water plants and you can't even get to the plants behind them because it's like there are too many leaves, the leaves are, too, are all in the way and it was a point of stress and frustration for me. Now that I have more plants moved out of here and I can actually see every individual plant, it's been so much like less stressful for me and so much easier to keep on top of watering. But anyway, let's start from back here. This one back here is a Jacenia pothos or like Epipremnum, the Jacenia one. It has like this green on green variegation. These are the leaves I got from Jing or maybe it was just this one leaf, I forget. And it basically just grew green leaves for me. So it just looks like a jade pothos. I don't know if I like it anymore. Jing says it's a highlight thing, but it does get a good amount of light because it's like always been quite close to the light. You can see like the light is up here. So it's not like direct light or anything, but it's not low light for sure. Um, over here, this is an Anthurium debilis. This one's known to be quite a difficult plant um, and basically just wants to be wet all the time. Um, it's dry, even if it's dried out, not even like fully dry, it just the kind of approaches slightly damp rather than wet it starts to do this so basically you see here i have it in tree fern fiber i have it just sitting in water and we'll see how it goes i think that's what it wants and it seems to be responding okay to it but we'll see if this like leaf stays nice next to it is the Santhurium pappy hybrid i showed it recently in a video i repotted it very recently and then next to it here is um this one is a philodendron leader red also known as uh, Philodendron biliatia af, also being sold as Pinati lobum, which is not a valid ID. It's kind of a finicky philodendron, I'm not gonna lie. I haven't been able to get it to size up, although it is not on a pole or anything, and I let it dry out a few too many times, but now that I've got um, kind of outer cup on it, it's much easier to get water and give it a drink when it gets dry. And then behind it here is this like lichen situation. It's, it's, yeah, it's been growing up this pole for a really long time and then it grew down the pole and then it kind of grew out to the side. I'm just kind of letting it do its thing. Yeah, I'm not really prepared to do anything about this mic and so it's just, it's kind of a fun little backdrop in the tent. Over here is my Philodendron Pink Princess. It's not super happy and the variegation is kind of all over the place and I don't really know why it's doing this. I don't know if it's like a CalMag deficiency. The pink on the next leaf, this half moon, is like browning off. It's continuously growing. I don't really know what's going on with this plant. Like it's thrown out some really nice leaves, some almost fully green leaves, and it'll just pop out these kinds of things right after. I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's currently potted in Killer Pond. So I think the reason why it's not totally burning is because a lot of the roots on this plant is actually in the pole and not in the pond. So I think that has been the saving grace for this plant. And then in front of it here is my narrow form Anthurium vichii, which grows so slow and it is not sizing up for me at all. It just put out the sleeve and it's still expanding. So once this one is hardened, I'm actually gonna repot it. I'm not loving this pot. First of all, I don't like the slitted pots, but it's been so long since I repotted this. I don't remember what the soil mix is in anymore and I don't remember what's in it. Yeah, I think it does need to repot. It just, it just I'm expecting much better um, size up on the leaves compared to what it's actually giving me. I only recently moved it up from down this level to this level and this is much a higher light level. So I don't know, maybe it wasn't getting enough light before. So this is one of my all time favorite anthuriums. Like 
from the moment I saw it, I loved the VGI. I just thought it was such a cool plant. And then when I found out there was like a narrow form and like how ribby it actually is, I just, ugh, I love it so much. My dream is to uh, grow a really, really big, big, long VGI. Now that I think about it, I don't know why Amanda doesn't have VGI. Maybe she hates it, but she would be so good at it and it would look so good in her house. Next to that is Nanthurium Lemurians. I've shown this many times on my channel. This is the newest leaf. It has not pushing one right now. It's doing caterpillars now, so it's going to be flowering size soon. There are so many luxuriance crosses. Like, does anyone else feel like the market is really getting flooded with these luxuriance crosses? Um, over here is my and I don't know, alocasia sandariana nobilis. It is very sad. It did not love this transition from soil to pond and it's holding onto this leaf for dear life and it's, it's definitely eventually going to go. I pulled it out this morning to repot into this glass because I wanted to get rid of all the dead roots that were in the original repot cup and get it into a new pond and I was able to check the roots and it's got a lot of like new roots forming so I am not concerned at all about this plant. It's going to come back. Um, it's just a shame that I have to lose this like beautiful leaf. Down here is my Carla Black Velvet Eastern Panama Cross from Amanda. I showed this in my last video. This was like a beautiful gift from her and the new leaf has popped out and it's looking delicious. It's looking so red. The venation is looking really nice as well. So I'm so excited to see that expand and hopefully it will size up. Next to that is none other than my Dark Phoenix. This is a beautiful plant. This was repotted not too long ago into a bigger pot. I was able to get the stem covered up more and it's pushing out a new leaf now. It responded to the repot really well. It's rooted a lot. So I'm excited to see this one keep sizing up because it's such a good plant, such a good plant. Okay, so behind this is my Alocasia Phrynic. I need to show you guys something. So I've been complaining that this plant does not want to grow any corms. Like the last time I repotted it, I checked, I, I fished around, there were no corms. And then today I look at this plant, just to check on the roots. And then I see this freaking all the way down here. Okay. We've got two baby fried eggs. Like, mm, I, I don't want to repot this plant, but I'm going to have to pull it out and then fish these little babies out. It's so deep. There's no way I can even dig it out. Why did you grow so low down? I bet you, I bet you, I bet you it started up here and just like dug his way down and then unfurled these leaves down here. Like it's you stupid idiot. The problem is the last time I repotted it, it reverted in size because it lost some of the roots. So I am not happy about it. It only started to size up back up again, but the last few leaves have been much smaller than the leaves previously were. So this is the last leaf to come out. It's definitely smaller than the leaves prior to the repot. So, I mean, I'm happy to have some baby fried eggs. I just really did not want to repot this plant because it doesn't actually need to be repotted. Next to the fried egg is my philodendron tortum. Doing so great. I recently, like somewhat recently, semi-recently, repotted it into a bigger pot. So it's got way more room to stretch its legs and way more substrate so that it doesn't dry out so fast. This is one of the plants that responded super well to great white. It immediately sized up, immediately just started growing nonstop. Like before great white, it was kind of like my Florida beauty. Like it was not putting out leaves that often. It was maybe like a leaf every six weeks or so. And now it's just like constantly putting out a new leaf. When one leaf is about hardening off, the next leaf is already emerging. So this is another plant I'm gonna try to keep in my tent as long as possible. I think it's one of the plants that really, really rely on warmth. And I think humidity definitely helps these like crazy leaves unfurl. But warmth is like so important for the tortum to grow fast. That's my opinion. Over here, this crazy situation. This is my Anthurium Malingeri. I showed this recently. It's got this like curly leaf. I think it's Calmag. I think it's a Calmag deficiency and maybe also underwatering. You know what? I think I want to repot this. I don't think that it stays hydrated enough for this plant. So I also have all these like crazy arrow roots like that have nowhere to go. So yeah, I need to clean this whole thing up. So I'll get it repotted before the next leaf starts to come out because if I look at the Catafil, the leaf is about to emerge. So, so this thing here is my Philodendron Serpens. This was doing so well for me. 
So here's the story. It was doing really, really well for me in EXO. Then I dis disassembled, disassembled my EXOs. Disassembled, disassembled. And I took it out and I thought it was gonna be okay in um, regular humidity for a while. And then that little while, maybe like I intended for it to be like a couple days, but that turned into like a couple weeks because I wasn't getting the new EXO set up in time. And um, it just threw a huge fit. It, crisped off a lot of leaves and yeah, it was not happy. And now that it's back in the tent, it seems to be doing better, but I'm a little bit mad at it right now. <laughs> but I, I, right now, right now, I'm not saying forever, but right now I don't care. Just for now. Behind it is an Anthurium Forgetii. This is the mother plant to my Forgetii seedlings. I've shown this before. It's such a cutie. I'm liking the texture more and more with every new leaf. This is my philodendron bicolor that I imported from Equigenera or like I picked up at the pop-up. It has done nothing. It's not rooting. It's not growing a leaf. It does not want to do anything. I don't know what to do. I think I might have to put it into something else other than pond, maybe tree fern fiber and kind of like pile up the substrate more and kind of activate some roots up here. But yeah, this situation is not, it's not the one right now. Next to that is my Alocasia watsoniana or Longiloba far watsoniana. Looking so beautiful. The last time you would have seen this, I think um, this leaf was out, but not fully expanded yet. That would have been my Alocasia video. And this one is out. It is pretty much like identical to the one before it. Doesn't that look so good? I love this alopecia. It's one of my favorites for sure. And it just like it sized up so easily. And I recently just got it repot into a much larger pot. It was like in like one of those coffee cups before and now it's um, graduated to a bigger pot. Another forgetty eye. <laughs> This one was sold as an Ace of Spades for Getty Eye Hybrid and later changed to, uh, what's it called? SP Velvet, they changed the name. And I repotted this in a video, um, the Q&A video with the, when I chopped the big Gloriosa and it immediately put out this leaf. It was very, very, very happy to get out of Killer Pond. You can see the roots on this guy. Yeah, it was an immediate thing. Like within days it was pushing out this leaf. I mean, I think it's a combination of tree fern fiber and great white that contributed to this like immediate turnaround. But this one's a fun forgetty eye because it is so smooth. All my other forgetty eyes have a bit more of a leathery texture or a more bully texture, but this one is just like so flat and so smooth and quite dark too. Back here is another Gloriosa. This one actually isn't mine. This one is, I've been um, kind of fostering it for Erin. Um, she had some troubles with this one, like being really pale. It's going okay now, but it doesn't get the best light. So um, it's not sizing up at all. This is one of those like white veins forms. So I'm, I don't know that she wants it back. I'll ask if she wants it back. If she doesn't want it back, I might just sell it for her or something. Cause I, I think it, this just takes up a lot of space and I'm not that invested in keeping it. Maybe I'll just give it to Charmaine, I don't know. Next to that is a Mame Green. It was sold to me as a Plamanii, I think. Yeah, it was sold to Erin as a Plamanii actually. And I chopped it up into pieces as a top cutting and it finally rooted and put out a new leaf. It had this like gross bacterial fungal looking spots all over it. So it's finally recovering, so yay. So now we're at the bottom level of my tent. I'm sitting down now because my arms are so tired. So I'm just gonna like pick things up and show you. A lot of these you would have seen fairly recently anyways. So if you're new to this channel, you might not have seen it, but if you, this is not your first time here, you would have seen a lot of these plants fairly recently. I'm basically only gonna show you the highlights because there are just so many seedlings in here. But essentially back here are all my personal forgetty eye seedlings. So the ones that I pollinated and grew from the seed myself. There are, I think, 16 of them back here. They're all either in pond or in soil and they're starting to size up. I'll probably hold back like a couple and then I'll probably sell a few and then give some away fairly soon. This is an Anthurium red crystallinum crossed with a portier. It's happily rooted in here, although it hasn't put out a leaf for me yet. It doesn't look like it's like that close to putting out a leaf either. Look at that PP root coming out here. Another plant I would have recently shown this one is an Anthurium Magnificum crossed with Ace of Spades. The newest leaf is really red and really pretty. Another plant from the same seed batch, Meg crossed with Ace. This one is also very cute. 
One of Lauren's hybrids, this is Vag Lux, aka the Crystal, Line, Crystal Meg for Getty Eye that has the big vagina in the back and the few sinus, um, which is crossed with luxuriance. I kind of want to repot it out of soil and put it in tree room fiber. See, it's kind of like dangling in the air here with no substrate around the stem. It won't be a very difficult repot. My precious red crystallinum from Amanda. I showed this in my last video, so it wouldn't have been long since you've seen it. Not much has happened since then. Only the leaf has fully emerged now. So it's just a waiting game to see what it looks like. I'm so excited. This one is an Anthurium Zara crossed with Michelle. This is looks like Zara F2 crossed with the Michelle F3, I think. That's how I read it. It hasn't done anything. When I got it, it was in moss and I repotted it to tree fern fiber. But now that I look at it, it looks kind of like it's about to put out a leaf. Can you see that petiole kind of stuck there? So this is one of the most toxic things you could do to a plant friend. This is from Amanda. She forced me to grow a philodendron lupinum. It was a really mean thing to do, honestly, because lupinum is just I, th I swear lupinum exists to make pe plant people feel bad about themselves, especially in the juvenile state. Amanda, if you are wondering, this is how it's doing right now. Pretty much as you expected. And these two are Magnificum Cross with Luxurians from Lauren. This is a North Shore Tropicals hybrid, both from the same seed batch, but this one, this one on the right is definitely growing a lot faster, a lot more elongated. This one just keeps growing really, really round, chubby leaves, super cute. This is a little pot of seedlings from my cross with Jing. So this is Tofu X for Getty Eye. Tofu is her like unknown Indo hybrid. It's really dark. It has a few sinus sometimes. It has quite a red emergent leaf. It's just really kind of an interesting plant. Like every leaf looks quite different. And my um, for Getty Eye that I showed earlier. So I have three seedlings here. I potted them together just to save space. Because it's in tree fern fiber, tree fern fiber kind of falls away from the roots really easily. So I am not concerned about being able to untangle these. It wouldn't be nearly as hard as moss for sure. My Anthurium Carla Blackie stump cut. Still not doing anything. It's still gonna be a long waiting game for that. This one is from Amanda. I've said it a million times. So this is a Dioscoria discolor. I got these locally from a lovely guy named Vincent and I stuck them in water as I was told to do and it has done nothing. No roots, no nothing, no sign of anything. If anyone has rooted these from cuttings, can you tell me what has worked for you? Because I'm very confused. Like where do the roots come out of? I think Charmaine has managed to get roots on hers. She also has it in water. I just don't understand like where where are the roots supposed to come out of? I'm supposed to grow a potato from this? This is my RA5 self, a pappy seedling from Amanda. This is the nicest leaf to grow, right, for me. I've shown this one before. This is the newest leaf and it looks super sus. When I was showing this in my last video, I was like, I was really, really inspecting it because I was like, it kind of looks thrippy, does it not? I've been watching it every few days. I cannot find thrips on it. I can't see any thrips damage on the other leaves. I don't see thrips damage on the leaves around it. Like it almost looks like really, really ugly, like variegation, but not really variegation, but like kind of like diseased. Yeah, I really hope it's not thrips. I don't see, I don't think it's thrips, but it does look a little bit thrippy to me, which is a little bit concerning. The roots do look good though. It's actually about to pop out another leaf. You can see if it'll focus on the stem. So we'll see what's going on here, but if I give you a close-up of the leaf, like from a different angle, this, yeah. If anyone's ever seen this on their leaf, let me know, but this does not look good. Behind it is my Anthurium Ace of Spades. This is the new leaf, this is how it's progressing. It's looking really red and so pretty. I'll definitely be sharing updates with this plant once it grows out, but what a beautiful emergent leaf. And of course, that's the plant from Amanda. Next to that, this is my Pap 5 Swamp Bunny Cross from Amanda as well. I showed this really recently, so I'm not going to talk too long about it. This is the newest leaf. It's got a little bit of root rot. You can see here some rots looking, some rots, some roots looking a little bit rotty. Well, I mean, it's definitely rotty down here. 
So we have some lower leaves being sacrificed in the process. It's trying to push out roots up here. It definitely needs a repot. Like look at how much stem is above the substrate. It's trying to put out a leaf right now. So before this emerge, I think actually I could probably get away with repotting it, cutting out some dead roots and getting it into maybe tree fern fiber or something. Or maybe just new pond, I'm not really sure yet, but uh, definitely needs a deeper cup. Over here, this one is an Anthurium Carib Queen, which is a J. Vanini cross of Dressleri and Rigulosum. This is like that weird silvery leaf that grew out with that like kind of, I don't know if I want to call it variegation, but it's kind of like that. And then there's just a hint of it on this leaf here. We can't really see it. We got a new leaf coming out now. I'm, I am so faded, if you can't already tell, I'm so tired. This is an Anthurium Mag, Mag Crystal crossed with Carla Blackie. Carla Blackie, however you want to say it. There's a new leaf right here. Very exciting. And then back here is um, my Gloiosum. My Gloriosum with glowy veins. That, the veins that really like bleed out. I said it was really hard to, to bleach this plant and I managed to do it. I, pu I pushed it back quite a bit but before it was like right under this light. And it's about to put out a new leaf as well. It's actually sizing up for the first time. I found this glorious and really hard to size up and it's actually starting to size up, which is very nice. Down here are some, um, just plants I don't really know where to put. This one is my SP Columbia with really cool veins. It's growing a little bit wide in the EXO. It was in the big EXO before. There are just too many leaves that look very similar. So they all it all looks really, really messy with all of them together. And since this plant likes kind of lower light conditions, I just shoved it in here in this like area that doesn't get much direct light. And we'll see how it does. Every leaf looks like this. It's a very cool um, SP Silver Columbia thingy. Next to that, these are Charmaine's birthday plants from Amanda. <laughs> she still hasn't picked them up. They're supposed to come tomorrow. The week that I got them, I, I was having that really, really hard week and I wasn't really like, you know, in a lot of chats. Like she knew I was going through some stuff. And then right after um, the following weekend, she got food poisoning. So just our, our schedules haven't lined up. So we've actually got some new leaves pop out while it's been in my care. So this one is the new leaf on the red crystal portier cross and then this one is the new leaf on the five swamp bunny cross. So she's gonna get some new leaves when she picks this up. They're still they're still all potted together in that bouquet. This one is one of the offshoots from the Subsignatum Pappy hybrid from Amanda. So that one's going to Jing and this one's going to Charmaine. And in my memory it was already yellowing i think when i when i um, removed this offshoot if i remember correctly I, I i truly hope so i really hope so i'm hoping it didn't get stem raw or anything i don't see roots on them either so i'm just gonna give them some light and hope for the best another gloriosum prop nothing too exciting this one is a philodendron holtonianum let me turn you around this one is such a crazy plant it grows like a weed i've chopped this and it just roots like crazy. The aerial roots are just insane. I tried to get them contained in the pole and they just like, yeah. This is another plant that used to live at the top of the tent and it grew too tall. You can see that it burned itself on the lights as well. We have some burn on this one, but it's such a fun philodendron. Like what a little weirdo. I really like this plant. I don't know, it's, one, it's another plant that grows too fast and it stresses me out. But it's a cool one for sure. I never show this one. I just don't really know how to show it. I don't know if anyone really cares about this plant either. But it is really cool. It's a thin leaf one. It doesn't have a really interesting texture or anything. It's just all the fun is in like the crazy shape and the crazy growth pattern. Over here is an Anthurium ex extipulatum. Ex extipulatum, I think. This was imported from Equigenera, I think around April or May. And it threw a fit and it dropped all its leaves for me and it's finally growing back. It grew a really deformed leaf. This was the first leaf to grow in my care. It's not even velvety and it was like really, really wonky. Now this one's looking a little bit more properly formed, although it's quite small, but it's a cool one. And then back there is one of my um, lady slipper orchids, the one that grows really, really long whiskers that go to the ground. Uh, it's not bloomed for me yet. It's still growing foliage. Seems to be happy. Ish. I know nothing about orchids. 
another birthday plan for Charmaine. I should bring that down because she's going to pick that up tomorrow. All right, this is the home stretch. This is the Gloriosa I recently chopped up in my repot video. You can see that um, it's really perky. It's taken to the repot quite well. It has not thrown a little fit. It did not drop any leaves, thank goodness. It continued to push out this leaf that was emerging when I repotted it. I don't think it's rooted like crazy, but thankfully it did not throw a fit. I've, I've had Gloriosums that just like, just drop leaves every time it gets chopped. No matter the root system it has, it always just throws a fit. So really glad this one didn't. I could definitely use a slowdown on this plant because the size, as much fun as it is to get it growing large, it also stressed me out quite a bit because I don't want to grow it outside the tent. So I want to keep it in here as long as possible. So if it kind of slows down a little bit over winter, I would definitely welcome that. Uh, this is the really, 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 really white elbow from Lauren that I repotted in a recent video on the lazy pole. It's looking quite perky and nice. So seems to be happy with the transition. And this is a Sodroy app or Philandrum Peltatum. Um, I was recently, I recently repotted it from, I think moss into tree cream fiber and it seems to be really happy. It's starting to size up. Next to that, I have this monstrosity of a Sodroy. I think it's a Sodroy. I, I don't think it's a Sodorini. This is what's happening with it right now. So this craziness happened and then it just kind of went away, kind of. This is how long it's been since it outgrew the pole. It had like started to grow out of the hole here, <laughs> like it was escaping the tent. It was going out like that and um, yeah, I moved it, but I am ready to check it out. I don't think I want it anymore. I just find that this plant is not very rewarding to grow for me. I know Jing can grow this plant really well. I just, I can't, I don't know what it is. Maybe I don't love it enough. This is a uh, Philodendron Heterocraspidon. I don't remember if I repotted this in a video or if I repotted this off camera. In any case, this was in Killer Pond. I got it out of Killer Pond, put it into tree fern fiber. It took to the repot quite well. You can see some roots forming, the fuzzy root here, fuzzy root here, and new leaf is on the way. Woohoo! Another plant I repotted in that video is this Philodendron White Princess. We got a growth point activated here. Other than that, nothing much to report. Back here is a variegated Vitarifolium. This is one I'm fostering from Jing. I don't know why this happened. This is new. Um, I have it in tree fern fiber. It's not dried out by any means and it's been growing fairly steadily, I guess. This is the first leaf I think I put on my care and then this is the second leaf I put on my care. And we have a new one coming in. I don't know if it'll focus, but there's a new leaf emerging. And then over here, three cuttings of Philodendron Rio from Charmaine. Is it three? One fall out? It was three. What happened? I I am confused. Where did it go? Where did that third cutting go? Did it fall out? Oh no. I'm gonna have to go look for it. There's one plant back here that's an orchid that I, I imported at the same time as the other orchid, so this would have been like May. Yeah, it's an orchid. I don't know anything about orchids, but it's still alive, still doing okay. And then last but not least, this is an Anthurium politiflorum. This is what I'm fostering for Charmaine trying to get it to grow better. Um, it's put out two leaves in my care, so this is the first leaf. This is the second leaf. It is sizing up. <laughs> this stupid idiot. So the root is coming down here right now, right? That That's all me. It wanted to root here and then curve upwards. So I direct the root downwards. Hopefully it starts to <laughs> grow better. It starts to um, size up better as well. But yeah, um, so far, so good. Once this is growing, like at least this size leaf, I'll give it back to her. So that is my grow tent and my arms feel like they're gonna fall off. And now past me is going to do the outro. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of the new plant room. I'm so excited to have a backdrop to film against that is not ugly. Not only are the plants happier, I'm happier to be in the space, but it's going to make filming a lot easier as well. So expect to see this backdrop a lot more in the future. Also, I wanted to say a massive thank you for everyone for all the support and the words of encouragement and the DMs 
from my last video when you know I wasn't feeling very good and I kind of talked a bit about like my mental health these days and honestly it's not it's not the best right now you know things can be better but if you're kind of going through something similar I will say the thing that has been doing the most for me which I didn't expect to be such a massive form of self-care for me is actually like getting rid of things and decluttering things that have been holding on for like over a decade that I never ever have any plans to use I've set up donation boxes um, and I've thrown away things that have no more use to anyone and it's been such a weight off my shoulders. It's not restful by any means so it definitely had to, I had to motivate myself to do these things but refreshing parts of my house and this room being one of them, making the space more functional, making the space more aesthetically pleasing has actually been a very unexpectedly effective form of self-care. I'm definitely, as Charmaine said, I mean, not in a video or anything, she said it within our group chat, like we are collectively as a group of friends kind of in a less is more phase. We kind of all gotten into this place where we're like, we don't want that many plants. We don't want that many things. We're not buying that many things. We're just kind of enjoying what we have and enjoying activities and the process of growing plants or enjoying spending the money on you know going out to dinners with friends or things like that we like fun cute things but we are also in this space of less is more it's definitely kind of been a big breath of fresh air for me if you are going through a bit of a rut it's definitely something to consider like everyone's space is different so your challenges for decluttering your space and or letting go of things is not going to be the same as mine while it is tiring to declutter and get rid of things it is also super energizing at the same time much more than i could have expected so that's my recommendation if you aren't feeling quite yourself but anyway that's enough rambling from me i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please remember to give it a like i love you all so much and i'll see you in the next one Mwah.